Hi again, everyone. My name is Tony Nichols, and I'm the senior pastor at Church Alive in Northwest Arkansas. Today, I want to talk to you about the secret of America's greatness. What, according to the scripture, makes a nation great in the sight of God? In 1 Samuel chapter 12, let me read to you verses 22 through 25, and it will begin to give us a little bit of a biblical context. For the Lord will not abandon his people on account of his great name, because the Lord has been pleased to make you a people for himself. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you, but I will instruct you in the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart, for consider what great things he has done for you. But if you still do wickedly, both you and your leaders will be swept away. For a period of nine months, during 1831 and into 1832, a French philosopher named Alexis de Tocqueville came to the United States to examine her rising greatness. Why, after only 43 years, was she able to compete on the world stage in world influence, business, and finance? He sought to discover the secret of America's greatness. He was from an aristocratic family that had suffered greatly during the French Revolution in a cleansing time in the nation of France. Here's a quote from Tocqueville. I sought for the greatness and genius of America in her commodious harbors and ample rivers, and it was not there. I sought for the greatness and genius of America in fertile fields and boundless forests, and it was not there. I sought for the greatness and genius of America in her rich mines and her vast world commerce, and it was not there. I sought for the greatness and genius of America in her public school system and her institutions of learning, and it was not there. I sought for the greatness and genius of America in her democratic Congress and her matchless constitution, and it was not there. Not until I went into the churches of America and heard her pulpits flame with righteousness did I understand the secret of her genius and power. America is great because she is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, she will cease to be great. We would have to be in a coma under a rock not to see the decline of this great nation. Why are we on such a severe decline? Because we have forsaken the Lord and his way of salvation and righteousness. Individual Christians have begun to compromise. The church preaches compromise without repentance and holiness. Our culture has begun to move toward humanism and godlessness for the most part. Therefore, the majority of those who govern us do not fear God and include Him in their decisions. We are living the consequences of a man being God and man being at the center of life. How can we as individuals, families, churches, and a nation return to true greatness? Let's define biblical greatness for a moment. The testimony of godly character that leads to righteous actions and produces godly fruit in life and culture. True biblical greatness results in God's favor and blessings coming upon people. I'm going to say it again. What's the biblical definition of greatness? The testimony of godly character that leads to righteous actions and produces godly fruit in life and culture. True biblical greatness results in God's favor and blessings coming upon people. I'm going to give you a point, and then I'm going to read you scripture to validate each point that I make. A nation is great because their God is great. Psalm 31:19 tells us, How great is your goodness, Lord, which you have stored up for those who fear you, which you have wrought or brought about for those who take refuge in you before the sons of men. Psalm 77, 13 says, Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? Psalm 95 and verse 3 declares, For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. When our God is humanistic, when our God is finances or our God is power, things are going to radically change so up and down, so distorted. A man once said to me, he said, before I came to know Jesus, he said, I was the God of my life 
And he said, I had an idiot for a boss. I laughed, but I really understood what he was saying. Once I came to know the Lord, I realized what foolishness that I had been involved in in making my own decisions without God. Here's the second point I want to share with you. God is great in righteousness and mercy towards those who repent. The word repent is a good word. It's not some angry, dirty word with a pastor wearing a white shirt buttoned up to his bottom lip and a totally black suit with angry eyes and a finger screaming at you. John the Baptist and Jesus used the word repent. It means a change of thinking and a change of heart that leads to righteous activity. Change of thinking and a change of heart that leads to righteousness. God is great in righteousness and mercy toward those who repent. Numbers 14, 17 through 19 tells us, But now let the power of the Lord be great, just as you have declared, the Lord is slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, forgiving iniquity and transgression, but he will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations. Pardon, I pray, the iniquity of this people according to your loving kindness, just as you also have forgiven this people from Egypt when they came out of Egypt, even until now. It is so interesting. Once you and I humble ourselves and repent and receive Jesus as Savior and Lord, our sins are wiped out. The Lord gives us the Holy Spirit and He teaches us how to walk with Him and do things His way. The result is our mind is changing, our heart and desires are changing, and when we do things God's way, there is great blessing from the Lord. Here's the third point I want to make. These are the characteristics of a great nation. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 5 through 7 instructs us, See, I have taught you statutes and judgments just as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do thus in the land where you are entering to possess it. So keep and do them, the statutes and the promises of the Lord. For that is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear all these statutes and say, Surely this nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there who has a God so near to it as the Lord our God when we call upon Him? When we honor God and we cry out to God, you and I will experience His presence and His help, usually pretty quickly. Receive and obey God's truth. We must run knowledge and talk into obedient lifestyles. So you run with the truth of God, you release with your words, and then you walk into these obedient lifestyles. 2 Samuel 7, verses 23 through 24, simply reveals this, that a great nation honors and obeys God above all else. They're not swayed by the fear of man. They're not swayed by what everyone thinks, but they care about what God thinks, and they live to please Him. Here's my final point. A nation is great because its leaders teach the people about God and His ways. I read to you out of 1 Samuel 12, 22 through 25. The Lord won't abandon us because of His great compassion and loving kindness because He has made a covenant commitment and He is faithful. He may discipline us, but those that turn our heart to Him, He will protect and bring answers and blessing. But if people stubbornly decide they're going to walk in resistance and wickedness against the Lord, then he says to them, you will be swept away. Alexis de Tocqueville discovered that America was great because the pulpits and churches were teaching the uncompromised word of God and the God-blessed constitution for an emerging godly nation. There are many kinds of greatness. One kind of all someone who is superior in or at something that we can never measure up and share in that greatness. Think people like Michael Jordan or LeBron James in basketball. What kid hasn't in the past put on some Jordan uh, uh, Nike Air uh, sneakers and said, I'm like Michael Jordan. I know the fantasy exists, but far from it. Others inherit greatness by birth and pedigree. Sadly, many of them don't rise to walk in that greatness. True greatness is connected to a great God and honors Him above all else. 
If we're becoming great people, we are becoming people of great character and integrity. We don't live these compartmental lives where I, this is my God life, this is my family and home life that's carnal, this is my business life that isn't honest. We live one life for God, whether it's alone or with our marriage and family or in our workplace or at the church or in society. We live to make others great and successful. We don't just live for ourselves. We live to lift up other people. We understand that all we have from God is a part of the big picture. And we're to carry that out faithfully. Let's become great people, have great marriages and families, and be a great church. Then let's be a part of influencing our region and our nation back to God. Thanks for your time today. Amen.